Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you so much for watching. So Onefinity has recently released an upgrade to the software for the BuildBotics controller for the Onefinity machine here that I have in the background. And they've introduced some really cool new features that I wanna walk through. So what I plan on doing here is installing the new version of the software, showing you how to do that in case you are not familiar with it. And then just walk through some of the new features. Some of them are relative to the the user interface itself and some of them are kind of uh, under the cover features that have changed that are going to be really important I think for the longer term survivability and the viability of the product itself. So let's go ahead and let's get on to it. I'm going to pull up the Onefinity user interface, show you how to uh, install that update and then walk through some of the changes. All right, so we have the Onefinity user interface pulled up here. And as you can see on the screen, I am currently on version 1.09 and it is asking me to upgrade to version 1.1.1. And so that's really cool that it's right there on the screen and it'll let you know. Now I have not homed or zeroed or done anything to my machine. I literally just turned it on and I wanna upgrade it and make sure everything goes smoothly. So let's go ahead and click the fly out menu here and go into admin. So this screen is where you initiate the upgrade process and you can see here, you can force the check, you can upgrade via the web or you can upgrade via a file. Now, if you wanna upgrade via a file, you have to download the actual binary, stick it on the SD card uh, or stick it on a USB flash uh, and plug that in your machine and allow the upgrade to process. We are going to upgrade from the web because I do have my machine on the network and it is connected. And that uh, quite honestly is just simply easier. So the first step of upgrading is to first First, save your current configuration in case anything happens with the upgrade. If you need to restore for some reason, you can always go back up to this configuration. So I click back up here. You can see it automatically just downloaded the Onefinity configuration. It actually gave it the name of today's date as well. So that's really cool. So now it is in my download folder. And if, like I said, if anything happens, you have that configuration right there. So let's go ahead. Let's cross our fingers that everything goes well. Let's click that upgrade button and see what happens. Yes, indeed, I do want to upgrade. Should take less than five minutes. If it takes longer, please restart your controller and try via USB. All right, we'll see what happens. I will be back when it reboots. So I'm currently waiting for it to upgrade. There is no discernible feedback whether or not it's doing anything or not. Interestingly enough, the screen that actually is attached to the machine is says that it's disconnected. That's normally what I get whenever I'm logged in remotely or whatever. So, you know, in this case, oh, look at that, it's doing something. It's rebooting. This is exciting, this is good news. Oh, infinite possibilities. It replaced my splash screen. That's very, well, it's expected, but it's disappointing nevertheless. <laughs> All right. I'll give it a few more minutes, we'll see what happens. All right, we're back. We got everything installed. I did a shutdown once and then reboot. So that's really awesome. There's now a separate uh, shutdown and booting screen. So unfortunately it destroyed the, the customization I made, but I'll go ahead and I'll put that back and uh, maybe I'll post a video on how to do that. So what you see on the screen here is it's asking me to home. I want to go ahead and cancel. Just point out some things right off the bat from the screen that were also in the notes here. We now have things that are selected are now in blue to provide a little more contrast, a little bit more easy to understand when you are selecting things. So I think that's really cool. The drop down list here now is sorted newest to oldest uh, before it was oldest to newest. So that's good that uh, the things you're working on most recently are now at the top of the list. I think that's really good. They've also increased the limit of uploads now to uh, one gigabyte from the limit that it was before. I'm not entirely sure what it was, but if you have a large or very intricate file, you want that extra headspace. Now you got a, a gig that you can upload, which I think is really cool. Other things that they've changed, you can now uh, have periods in your file names. Apparently that caused issues in the past. So I I think that's good as well. Uh, looking at the list here, they've, uh, they say that they've completely rewritten Wi-Fi. I don't know what that means in reality, but let's go ahead and go into the, the network settings here and see what we see. 
All right, well, so there you go. Now, this is really cool. So now you can see a list of all your SSIDs or your Wi-Fi networks that you can attach to before I think you had to type it in manually if I remember properly. Now, I am using a wired connection, but it's really cool here to see all the different uh, SSIDs that I have in my house. So I actually have uh, three primary, one for each floor. But this does tell me now the icons here. If you see the number of bars on the icon tell you the relative signal strength uh, or your ability to connect to that network. And what is interesting is the network that I had the Onefinity connected to when it was giving me issues is this IoT down, which is actually the lowest signal strength out of pretty much all of them, which is interesting because the access point is about six feet from here versus the main floor, which is, you know, 15 or 20 feet above me, or the third floor, which is, you know, 40 or 50 feet away. So that's interesting, but that does give me some good indication why I was having connectivity issues. So I have to figure out what's going on with my network. And like I said, I am wired. So it, that is my wired IP address. So I don't know how to disable Wi-Fi if I wanted to or select one over the other. But uh, nevertheless, it seems to have the right IP address. So I'm good to go there. So let's go back to the uh, control screen. One other area that they said that they changed on the screen, it shows you the display units. They now indicate on the manual data interface tab what units your machine is in because the display units can be different than what your machine is and that's important to know if you want to enter manual commands. So sure enough, here it is. It says that the machine is currently operating in metric. And so that's good to know because right here on the screen, you can see everything's in Imperial. But uh, so if I start you know, importing commands in Imperial units here when the machine's in metric, that wouldn't achieve the results I'm looking for. And more importantly though, I think this is now, it, it now saves this setting after you reboot because I think before, every time it uh, rebooted, it would always end up in metric. So I think now they're saving this because I did change it to Imperial at some point, And I know that it would just change it to metric every single time. So I think that's really awesome. But if we change it back to, whoops, if I change it back to metric, everything should change. Yeah, so it changes into metric. So cool. I think that's a good, uh, a good update and a good change. And certainly that's something I know some people have asked for. So they're definitely listening to their customers, which is awesome for Onefinity. Some other things they change. I know they changed some of the support for the game pads. They now have better support for the maybe the game pads that they don't necessarily recommend or the non-standard game pads as well as better responsiveness from the game pad so that you get a little less drift when you're using it so i think that's good that's something that i know that i've wanted personally oh there's a couple under the hood changes they've made which i think are really important so they switched from a disk based swap to a ram based swap what does all this mean well what it means is it's going to write less to your sd card which is going to increase the lifespan of your sd card which means the 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 viability or the long longevity of your controller will last longer, the SD card will last longer, and so uh, you have less likely of your machine breaking itself because the SD card dies or something. So I think that's really important. That's a little bit of an undercover, undercover sort of geek thing, but I think that's a really important change. What else? Added the shutdown screen, added the splash screen, so yeah, we know that as well. And then, oh, the probing process. Apparently they've completely updated the probing process, and so they've added a wizard, which I think is really cool. And so we'll click on it here. I don't have my probe connected, so uh, we can't follow the process. But you can see here, they've got pictures now, tell you exactly what to do. They walk you through it step by step. They give you reminders to take the magnet off so you don't accidentally turn your router on with your cables connected. I think that's really awesome. And so that'll really help new users and help people get a lot more comfortable, but also just reinforce you know some of the, the basics there. I think this is really awesome. Having this wizard is a great upgrade. And it's something I think that Easel has. I don't know about Carbide Create, but certainly you know Easel has it. So so I think that's a good change. All right, so those are kind of the wave tops or the highlights of the things that I picked out of a long list. I will leave uh, the entire list or a link to the list down in the comments if you want to check out everything Onefinity has to say out on the forums about all the different changes they've made. Um, I think it's good information and I really do think that they are really keeping their customers in mind. They're really prioritizing changes that matter. I think the, the actual control of the CNC is a lot more stable, a lot more reliable. And now they're kind of moved into uh, features that are uh, maybe not so directly related to the control but are, are convenience things. And so there's a couple things I would love for them to add. I would like to have the Wi-Fi uh, signal strength and IP address here on the main screen so you don't have to go into a submenu to see it. Uh, I, I would love for them to finally add macros like the BuildBotics controller actually has if you were to buy one of those. I think macros are going to be important and allow you to run scripts and things like that. Uh, the other thing I'd like to see is plugins. So if I want to change this interface or I want to I do things in the user interface, 
interface. I would like to be able to potentially write my own plugins. I think that'd be really, really cool. But other than that, I think they're doing great. I think they're supporting their customers and things are going well. So if you get the opportunity to go out and check out the upgrade, check out the forums or read about it and say uh, hi to Onefinity if you get the opportunity from me. <laughs> All right, let's wrap this up. All right, well, there you go. We have installed the new versions of software. It seems to be up and running and good to go, and I'm super excited by this. So I have a lot of projects to do and a lot of milling to do, so I'm really going to run it through its paces and make sure that uh, there aren't any major problems with it. Now, as I mentioned before, there are some people on the forums that have indicated there are still some issues, which I'm sure Onefinity is working on. So if you do experience some of those issues, I do encourage you to reach out to support, let them know that you're having a problem, or post on the forums so Onefinity can track some of the issues that maybe they haven't found in their own testing. All right, well, thank you so much for watching the video. Thank you so much for getting this far. And don't forget to be inspired. It's really awesome that I just recorded this entire video, not once, but twice, without the microphone turned on. So, lesson learned. You know, it has the little levels right there, uh, but the USB cable is covering it up right now, so son of a bitch. <laughs>